rats. What do they want from us? Rats. Why are they man's enemy? Rats. They are watching and waiting. Rats. Their time has come. Why do rats repel us? What is it about those little furry bodies that's so frightening? Just think of them close to you. Look who's back! All right, George. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? This is I, before I say anything. I have to say this is a very interesting setup today because your camera is just focused on the dangling mic in front of you, and I can't see you at all <laughs> unless I peer my head round. Like yeah, but then it just looks really odd. Yeah, I know. It's because abs- you're in such shadow as well. It's as well framed as most of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> scathing <laughs> um, how are you i'm very well thank you it's lovely to be back yeah and you had a you had a busy summer touring i did yes i finished a long a long theatre tour and i'm about to um uh, begin another one so yes and and uh it's kind of on brand though isn't it because yeah. i would say um i wish you were dead the one that you just finished which i saw that's definitely has its creepy elements and it's set up as a, a sort of creepy narrative and then obviously it gets more and more funny and uh more thrillery towards the end yes i think so i th- I think loosely it's a um a sort of thriller um it was yeah. a bit of everything um yeah and then this upcoming tour 222 a ghost story is definitely on on horror brand i would say hell yeah I, i'm so excited to see it i i still haven't seen it so uh i'm looking forward to it but our good friend chandra who was on the show recently uh spoiled it for me because well i'm not going to say it but she basically yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i would say that twist. is i mean to the point where they actually project shush don't tell at the end onto sort of <laughs> the wings and stuff so that you are left the theater going i definitely won't tell anybody but she obviously had, um, thought no i will <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, I'm going to try and pretend when I do see it that I don't know that and watch it from a fresh perspective. I, I would um, say, having read it, uh, I still enjoyed the twists. So, yes. Yeah, no, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Um, but that's very exciting. So that, when does that kick off? Is it January? Yeah, January. We're on the road, starting in Northampton, and then we kind of go everywhere. That's very exciting. How long is it for? Six months. Woo-hoo. Yeah, six months living out of a bag and, um, you know, eating cereal in strangers' homes. All that. Yeah. How did you find it? Because obviously, when we first met over a decade ago, um, what was it? Wait, is it like 15 years? I think it was 2007. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, very different um, tour life, I would say. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because we were also, we were kids. We were sort of um, in our early know, 20s and um, yeah. full of effervescence and exuberance. Yes. And, um, and nights would finish with us with like traffic cones on our heads and things, wouldn't it? Yeah. And getting written warnings from producers. Yeah, whereas now I would say it's a cup of Straight peppermint home to bed. tea <laughs> and something on Netflix. It's mad, isn't it? It's mad. <laughs> but it's it's not that. But the thing is, I don't want to do any of that anymore. No, either. God, no. It's I mean, my mental health I, is a much mental... better situation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I can't even. I can't even start going through all the memories because they're ridiculous. But I just remember some of the parties. I remember finding you at one point down the end of a field kicking a fence crying <laughs> yeah there was that there was that f- sort of infamous house party in mold that i also yes. remember that i'd started to um convince myself that to get through the show i would need it because it, it, the shows required a sort of certain level of energy and um yes and i found that a can of red bull was actually quite effective <laughs> and then i got too used to that so i had two cans of red bull and a cigarette and i um, yeah i basically had this awful experience of having a panic attack mixed in with a hangover and adrenaline and caffeine (laughs) (laughs) and it was possibly the worst acting experience of my life but that that just describes the entire tour to be honest just a hungover panic attack (laughs) (laughs) yeah good paying audiences though i mean don't you feel bad in a way yeah um, not at the time. I do no. now. I think. I think if I was in the audience and I went to see that now, I would spot it a mile off and go, "These kids haven't been to bed." 
Yeah, this was at the and National. Yeah, I'd be, yeah. They're bright be red, sweating, and they're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we actually held the show once, and our stage manager went and bought me a Mars bar. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> to, to it wasn't because I was being a diva. <laughs> it was just to get oh, me no. back, to, back to some kind of normality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times, eh? Good yeah. times. Um, but uh, today I bring you here to talk about Rats, Night of Terror. Hmm. Uh, extraordinary. Um, I, I, I don't want to be entirely negative because that seems um, counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely start by saying I quite like the premise. Uh, okay. I, I love post-apocalyptic Yes. Um, dystopian futures. And when I read the blurb, you know, they sort of start off, don't they, by firing up the text and they give you the context. I thought, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm in. I'm kind of in. It's in set in the future, isn't it? I got a little confused by the timeline. Right. Um, oh, I'm so glad you said that. But also a bit upset because I was hoping I could come to you and go, can you just iron this out for me? Because I'm not sure. Oh, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally with you there. And we'll probably get into that even more as the film goes on. So, yeah. so what we're told as an audience member is that uh, in 2015, so all, we're already in the future, based on when yeah. the film was made, there is an atomic bomb sort of war. Mm-hmm. And um, and then from then on, uh, time is dictated as after atomic bomb, isn't it? Yeah, and, maybe. And they then say that everybody disappears underground to protect themselves. Yeah. And a hundred years later, some people come out and sort of start to exist on uh, on land again. The on surface, the surface again, yeah. On the surface, and then this film is set in um, 225 AB. So that's, am I right? That's, that's 2240 yeah. as we know it now. I feel yes. like in an early meeting, somebody added an extra zero to the um, <laughs> the timeline and nobody picked up on it because they make no effort to suggest, I would say, that it's set 240 years into the future. No, no, that's, that's what absolutely blew my mind because... It's not until near the very end when we hear a voice recording saying this old extinct animal called a rat, uh, you know, they're back. And But then you're like, oh, hang on. So the people we've just watched for 90 minutes aren't really meant to recognise what these animals are. So why aren't they more like, oh, my God, it's a fucking dodo, you know? So it's, the film also starts off by saying uh, the people who returned to the surface are, are viewed as scavengers and everybody below ground is a sort of sophisticated liver. That's right. And they're like the sort of... The primitives are on land and basically the, um, the human race as we sort of know it, maybe a bit evolved, are underground. So yeah. when we meet our, our cast, I assumed that they'd come from the from the underground because yes. there is nothing to suggest they're scavengers they are literally dressed like george michael in careless whisper <laughs> or fair vid- videos and mad max they've, got, they've all got cravats and stuff or like grease too maybe or yeah <laughs> yeah it's all very cool right it's high it? cam yeah because our, our leader leather has a bright red sash yeah. remember this is 225 years <laughs> after atomic annihilation yeah and they've all got highlights and quaffed hair like it's good to know that schwarzkopf is still around 225 <laughs> years after you know at home kit because yeah they've all got their hair done and it's this is the sort of shit that makes you go hang on what what year is this and when did the bomb happen unless yeah. it's 225 days after the bomb i feel not, like the whole thing feels years. like days exactly exactly that and i don't think it needed to be set 200 years in the future actually no because if there was a bomb they don't i think it's let's be honest it's for the twist at the end of the film to suggest that something's happened evolution yeah yeah um so just to uh before we get into it just to let you know what it was released as in other territories because this is one of my favorite things to do okay now the thing is it may not read the way the translation read so if in argentina let's say it was called the smiley face killer um it's like the translation obviously doesn't make sense to us so that's what my favorite thing is is finding the title in the respective language then just putting it through google translate so uh (laughs) in belgium it was rats of manhattan which i thought was very specific because i had no idea we were even i didn't know where we were no that's very specific because that's not that's not just a country or a borough no it is a borough in a specific state so yeah um in colombia it was after the bomb which I kind of like. Yes, that that's better. Gives it gravitas. Yeah, a lot longer after the bomb, but... <laughs> <Sure>. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, in France, it was mutants of the second humanity. Ah, well, is that, is that a bit of a spoiler? Spoiler. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. In Spain, it was the year twenty twenty five after the Holocaust. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I, it's not it's very confusing. And the year twenty twenty five. That's confusing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and then also saying after the ho- the Holocaust. It's yeah, like, oh, it, a Holocaust maybe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they've just completely forgotten about that. Um, and then my favourite. <laughs> You'll like this one. Greece. Greece always have the best ones. It was <laughs> <laughs> bastards of the underworld. Oh, lovely. That is yeah. good. Bastards of the underworld. Um, so, yeah, I, like you, I love a post-apocalyptic. I love a dystopian. So it does get you excited. And it's very much the Mad Max model, isn't it? Because we've had two Mad Max films by the time this came out. Um, right. And then yeah. these scavengers, savages on their Mad Max vehicles. Uh, and then they're exploring this abandoned building. And this is where we first see the rats. Yes, the which I think are mostly real, aren't they? Do they? Oh yeah, um, and lots of them died during the filming. Yeah, of this. I know. That's, that's actually quite a sort of sad side note. Um, the, the rats, it it, it it basically doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, we should, I know. I know they've got the I mean, sort of tech, they're working against technology. Exactly, it's called rats. So it's like get get the rats right. I'm not sure what I, I wanted, but it certainly wasn't just um, stock footage of of rats just sort of um, just nib- nibbling and, and hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Throughout this film, we're meant to believe they've become the superior race and everyone is terrified of them. So much so that they're constantly saying, oh, we can't get out of this room because yeah. of the rats. And they'll maybe crack open the door. And it's not like the rats are covering the floor or not even at all. near the door. They're just Sometimes they're much... not even there and they just refer to them. There's, a, there's lots of, <laughs> there's lots of bit, footage of them, of the cast looking up at windows and saying, you want to fight, do you? And, and then I'm like, there's, no, there's nothing there. And then suddenly, suddenly they pour in like they've definitely been dropped by the art department from yes. a barrel it just sort of poured on top of them um yeah, yeah it's very no, it's very rats, strange rats were harmed in the making of this um you can see the moment where the uh the guy's it video is on fire there's a real rat on his head and he is fully in flames and you can see this oh, rat when he is falls like, down the sewer what is bit. happening it's just dreadful and apparently all the rats that died they um the the crew kept them kept the dead rats so they would throw oh. them on the actors during attack scenes so there was a right. mix of rats so they kind of and... recycled them yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> but at this uh, and it's so they're so unmenacing um, oh unbelievable I mean, the bit at the end uh, w- i'm not going to jump forward exactly but there's a sort of section where they have to leave and they are tiptoeing amongst perfectly well-behaved rats. It's basically <laughs> yes. like, it's like an I'm a celebrity challenge, isn't it? It's so... <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's that. And also it's at that moment where actually they could walk around them because they're in a very small group, but they have to, they decide to walk through the rats and tiptoe and you can see just clear space either side of them. Yeah. I just love it. And this, this was obviously, they learned from this because then a few years later there was a film uh, rats are also known as Deadly Eyes, uh, which is based on the James Herbert novel Rats. And for that one, they used Dachshunds in rat suits. <laughs> oh, gosh. That sounds like sort of yeah. a Halloween costume of today. Yes. And so you can very much see that in all the attack scenes, it's just Dachshunds licking people because that's what <laughs> they love to do. They go for the face. But obviously with these little rat tails stuck on and little funny ears stuck up. Uh, so you could just see someone it's like the dream just being covered in dashens or trying to lick your face but one of them even on that one of them overheated and died and oh. it's just it's the 80s man yeah oh, there weren't animal awful. rights on sets then were there i mean these days no. you know they, they the joke is that they get the best trailers and you know long, yeah. longest lunch breaks and stuff if it's not cgi yeah yeah, yeah. it's very funny um, um, have we actually mentioned that it's italian we have uh, no of course no, no, because no, I actually wins. didn't know this until the actors began to speak and I thought, oh, Christ, it's dubbed. Um, yes. And the dubbing adds an extra level of, of humour, I suppose. Yes, I always think the best thing, because I love Italian horror from the 80s, because it is known for its low-budget trashiness. And um, this was directed by Bruno Mattei. And some people say also Claudio Fr- um, Fragasso, and they were both known for the trashiest of uh, Italian horror. Um, and they did really bad 
fake sequels like they did um a, a, a terminator 2 Oh, they were, that they called, released as Terminator Two, which is a terrible film. They released one called Jaws Five, which is an unofficial <laughs> Jaws sequel, or Cruel Jaws, it's also known as. And they just used to get away with whatever they want. It was always an absolute loose cannon. And Italian horror is one of my favourites because it is always dubbed. So even the Italian version is dubbed, and so it's it's pointless anyone even speaking on set because they will record, they will film the film. And then they'll dub everything in Italian and then dub everything in English, even oh, if you're okay. speaking Italian or English. So there's two different right, versions. Right. And it's great because you get all the added lines, which just you can tell was in the studio saying, we need a line here. And it makes zero sense. Yes, there's lots of background chatter, isn't there? Where yeah. people just say really generic things like, no, after you. Hey, you were here. I was here first. Give me that. You know, this kind of sort of nonsense stuff. Yeah. I, 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 or just unfinished thoughts like, oh, no, not Lilith. She was always so... <laughs> <laughs> just that. So what? The, the, I mean, I felt very that? sorry for the for the voiceover artists at some sections. There's um, a particularly funny um, joke or banter moment where... Um, I mean, there's a very gratuitous sort of sex episode where, where two of the characters are basically... Um, copulating in a sleeping bag and uh yeah. the, the, the sort of punchline is that that they can't get the zip to to work so they can't get out of the situation and they sort of joke that they're going to die in a sleeping bag and then someone sort of goes he's got a problem with zips and undoes the zip and everybody falls about like it is <laughs> the <laughs> funniest thing and obviously the dubbed kind of the dubbing actor has to sort of provide those laughs it's yes. so good <laughs> and that's always also the moment where she says this strangest line in the strangest way so the line is careful you're leaning on my shoulder that's what the girl in the sleeping bag says but she goes careful you're leaning on my shoulder <laughs> maybe they were trying a sort of lip sync i'm not sure there yeah is an odd, there's an odd, make... odd pause yeah <laughs> shoulder <laughs> <laughs> now the damn zipper's stuck please be careful lucifer you're leaning on my shoulder help me can't you see i'm stuck i mean the the actors in general are extraordinary aren't they we need to talk about uh chocolate who is obviously the only person of color and yes her name is that's problematic but her name um she's in she's a star she's an absolute legend in italian horror so oh, she's okay. in, like demons and all sorts um but her name in real life is goretta goretta so her first name is Goretta. Her second name is Goretta. Good. Loved things like that. Like Gary that Neville's wonderful? dad, Neville Neville. Yeah. Neville Neville. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, but all these corpses that we start seeing, and we're seeing that the rats have apparently eaten them. And there's a corpse that falls out of a wardrobe arm oh, yeah. first. Like it must have, you know, rigor mortis must have set in while he's doing a Nazi salute or something, because that's the only thing I can think. And But some of the dialogue, there's so many sections in the middle where clearly they're like, we need to flesh this out because we just can't keep getting stuck in rooms and going, oh, there are rats outside. Yeah. Then get into another room and going, oh, we're stuck in this room now. So they try and have lots of inner conflict within the group that yeah, we're meant to yeah. give a shit about. I, th- I think, I suspect a lot of it was improvised in that they mm. held for a wide shot because everybody sort of front on, did you notice? It's almost like a sort of stage. Everybody's, yes. like tw- they can hold 12 characters in like a wide shot. And then they obviously just decide to have some conflict between two of the characters and everybody kind of picks picks their side. That seemed yeah. to be the sort of general pattern. It was sort of, yeah, lots of just, just shouting just about things. Out. Yeah, just fleshing it out completely. Like, there's a, this, I wrote down so many just exchanges that are so random and pointless. One of them was, what the fuck's wrong with this flashlight? The damn thing's broken. And the girl says, you always screw things up. And he says, wait, that's not fair. This could happen to anybody. What? He, what an, I mean, he's right. I don't think the yeah, flashlight not that. working re- reflects his competency. But wh- it's just absolute codswallop and tosh. That's all they're speaking. What do we think then? So the guy who's called Video, who yep. got his name from playing video, video games, games. So he is at the main electric sort of main. I love. That I find. love the, how we find out that he's a techie. Um, yes. Because they basically find this supercomputer, don't they? Which looks like yeah. an eighties arcade game. Yeah. And he goes, ah, oh, that's how I got my name, video game. I'm brilliant at computers. And then he <laughs> he, he hits the, the keys and the buttons. <laughs> you know that viral video of the newsreader when they when it's just like going back to the main studio and she just sort of like hits all the keys just yeah, to sort yeah, of yeah, suggest yeah, yeah. that she's got some work to do. It's like that, basically. And then it all yeah. works. It's brilliant. Yeah, it just goes on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. 
and it works. I mean, like, anyone could have done that. It's amazing. And they're um, like, just oh, flicks every you. single switch, and they're like, "Oh, you did it!" And um, do you know why he does it? He does have motivation. Do you remember? Because no. the other cat, I think it is chocolate, says, "If you get this to work, I'll let you get me pregnant." <laughs> that's that's right. And he, and, and, he, and he holds it to it. Yeah, he tries to sort of get get his reward. Yeah. He literally, yeah, he literally comes and says, "Um, you know, you have to settle your debt." <laughs> <laughs> and so she kind of goes, oh, I will. It's good to see that women have become equals in 2025 AB, isn't it? Yeah, it is good, isn't it? <laughs> and there's um there's the moment when I think it's a girl called Lilith. And she says something like, why? Because they've all they found all these greenhouse plants. And she says, why aren't these plants out in the open? And uh, the guy goes, oh, it's a long story, Lilith. It would take too long to go over it. And it's like, so just say you don't know. It's okay. Yeah, because yeah, they find it's out so later, good. don't they, with the recording. Um... Well, also in the next scene, he then explains to a male, he goes, oh, they've managed to artificially recreate plants and vegetables from yesteryear using the greenhouse effect. It's like, oh, it's okay. Oh, well, it's not that long. <laughs> she won't get it. She won't get it. Yeah, it's that. It's I'll that. Tell, and I'll also, it'll take too long. In a post-apocalyptic wasteland, the one thing you definitely have is time. Yeah. I know they're in a sort of, are they driven by hunger because they sort of start talking about mouse pie and rat stew and stuff, don't they? And... Yes, I guess so. And and they've had that random food fight when they find all the sort of oh, flour that's and a gr- stuff. You see, that's it. There's these strange set pieces. Like that whole sequence is them basically finding unidentified boxes which become uh, food packages. Hmm. And someone cuts open a bag of sugar and just pours it over their eyes. You know. So- <laughs> It's like, God, mate, you're going to run out. Like, what are you doing? You know. And they pour a bag of flour over chocolate and she does like a gesture. And then dance they dance. And goes, yeah. I'm white. I'm as white as you are. Oh, God, it's that's like, awful, isn't it? Yeah. Comedy. Yeah. Fucking hell. I think that's supposed to be the light before the dark, isn't it? It's supposed to be the I sort guess of so. the fun before all the, the, the rats, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose so. What the, I, you know, when those two are having sex in front of everyone and everyone's yeah. just watching. And well, I, everyone says that they're trying to sleep, but they're all sitting up in bed. And it's like, guys, just yeah. lie down. If you want to sleep, lie down. S- Definitely. Yeah, they are sat right up and they're really getting a good oogle. And they're, they're like, uh, these they're close, you know, these two. They've been going at it for a while. There's no way this is the start of it. Well, he says he's so about to get his rocks done... off. He gets annoyed, yes. doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so they've been watching for, what, 10 minutes? And then they're like, oh, this is inappropriate, actually. <laughs> I mean, it is inappropriate. Take it outside. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like a school party and i thought oh there's obviously you know that they're, they're, they're covering up the actors because and putting them in a sleeping bag to sort of protect their um the sort of you know preserve their dignity and then in the mm. next scene they're completely butt naked oh my gosh completely and they yeah they crack on outside and then he's and then he's ready to go again lilith says she's too tired and so he calls her a stupid bitch and says, but women don't are forget, all alike. he also started that scene by saying, we are so alike. I think we could really make it. And then t- two minutes later, calls her a bitch and stomps off. <laughs> stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a lot of devices, aren't there, to get characters on their own. I think that's what it yes. is mainly. And I think the reason we had that whole zipper moment is an explanation of why Lilith doesn't get out of the sleeping bag when Later a rat on. gets into yeah. it. Now, I, I this is so horrible because only when they find her, because the rat gets into the sleeping bag, she's screaming, and then when they find her, it comes out of her mouth. But they say there's not a mark on her body. So the rat we, yeah. has gone inside her. Mm-hmm, I think so. So we're, we're, we're meant to believe that the rat has gone up there and mm-hmm. eaten its way up to her mouth yeah i believe so Does, <laughs> good, great just it's just so rotten the, 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 there is a i mean i didn't dwell on that but there is um those are the gorier moments aren't they they, they enjoy the yeah. rat out of the mouth trick a few times yeah that happens quite a few times and it kind of looks like the same shot from different angles yeah definitely a slow motion uh, but they of... they're all they're all sort of a yeah, they're all against each other. Then they're together, and they're one of this almost splinter cells. Um, and then the monk type guy with the triangle on his head, he suddenly oh. comes up with a hypothesis that the rats have become the superior race, and that you know they've exited the sewers. Um, and they, they just yes, keep it's a good explanation. We've got to go on. No, but yeah, he he kind of explains their idea, doesn't he? The filmmaker's idea that 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 yeah. we push the rats out from underground 
because we went underground. And so now the rats have kind of started to evolve on, on the surface, I suppose. Yeah. And they're just constantly talking about breaking out of there, like we've got to get out of here. But the thing is, we've definitely seen moments. I mean, we saw them come in. Yes. Yeah. So they well, the, the, they make out. a big deal about the fact that the rats have eaten through the tyres, as if that means they can't yes. go anywhere. And you're like, well, right, just, just <laughs> right. walk. Yeah. <laughs> that's but the but thing. that's yeah, because the threats from above, isn't at... it? The, 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 the basic, yeah. the premise is that rats are everywhere, but but unfortunately, mm. the budget doesn't stretch for that. So. I know, and I find that interesting because they're acting like this is the first time they've encountered them because they're, they they seem to be like they've been traveling, they're transient, you know, they go from, you know, um, town to town, these old sort of um, abandoned towns. But when they're here, it seems like it's the first time they've come across rats. They call them mice at one point as well. And so I find that confusing because if it's hundreds of years later, the rats haven't got that far if it's mainly just this building although at the end yeah that's why i was confused by the sort of the factions of humanity and who was who i didn't really understand that these were just had been on on the surface for ages because they weren't they didn't strike me as sort of scavengers who had just appeared from the surface you know from the underground sorry so yeah that that whole thing was quite confusing and i I think there's there's a background uh line something about think of the diseases these rats could give you hepatitis scoliosis and plague (laughs) I'm, I don't know about scoliosis. And is plague a, an official term of a name of a disease? Actually, I guess it is. Well, yes. I mean, an historic more... d- disease for them, obviously, because, you know, well, a very 300 historic. years. <laughs> 300 years since <laughs> COVID. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it just keeps going on at this point, And there's the whole 20 minute section. Unfortunately, where... once you understand the the sort of pattern of the film, which is one by one they're going to die off you are slightly yeah. going okay let's get through it and but the thing is we don't even if they use the fake rat which we see maybe once or twice a very quick cut of i would prefer to see that rat sort of attacking someone even if it's a hand puppet because every time we see the rats they look more and more just inconvenienced and like get, can you fuck off with the cameras it, yeah yeah totally and uh, i mean there's there's that se- so that section where the man, after he's called her a stupid bitch, goes outside and sort of, he's like wandering around like Danny doing stranded, at, you know, at the drive-in. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> doing, doing his Sandy moment and um, shouting at rats that aren't there and drinking an entire bottle of wine really quickly. And then he sort of yes. like falls into the sewer, doesn't he? And gets... In a gymnastics of, way. Yeah. And like rats hold, just, holding on while they plummet on top of him. It's really odd. It's really odd, all that. Um, that... uh, one bit I really did like, though, it's the guy Taurus, who, you know, he there's a really great set piece where he turns and he's all chewed up and he falls down. Then rats explode from his back. Oh, yeah. I, th- I mean, there are some, yeah, sort of hilarious. I mean, they're not a group who I would think would survive for very long anyway. Some of the <laughs> decision making, you know, that at one point someone chucks a grenade into the same sort of vehicle that he's in to kill the <laughs> yes. rats. And wonders why While he also shouting, gets... repellent, repellent. <laughs> and they often, they often just use like proper machine guns at rats. You know, like he's not going to ricochet off the walls and stuff, or flamethrowers. <laughs> like the, the the kit way outweighs the sort of problem. I think just put some poison down, <laughs> or stamp, just stamp yeah, instead just... of crawling through it. You know, just whack a mole. Yeah, it's why is that grenades and machine guns and flamethrowers? Yeah, it's it's, it's bizarre. wild. It's very dark though. When Diana, the girl, um, she's risen from her sick bed and she slits her wrists, and that's that's the moment when I thought that feels really odd in this film, a film that is so on the surface and trashy and pretty, pretty much pretty nothingy. To then I have did, such a dark. I wrote. Undertone. I wrote exactly that. I wrote why because. She's left on her own for a bit, doesn't isn't she? And then she sort of has this Bonnie yeah. Bonnie Tyler kind of moment, and yes, when she walks slowly to shouts, the window, she sort of starts on the rats, and then yeah, and then just slits her wrists. It's like oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but the uh, Kurt, this is getting to the end now, and Kurt, the leader with the sash, and he says, "We're all going to end up the same as her. They're so much stronger than we are." And I haven't yeah, seen evidence. that. In what capacity? I think that's the problem is that the actors commit to the rats being absolutely terrifying killers. Yeah. But if anything, you've been orchestrating all of the deaths by your inflated paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> I 
yeah. because I I don't see any any issues or any rat power going on at all. There's lots but, yeah, of histrionics, find... isn't there? About yeah, about the rats. so much histrionics. L- yeah. I mean, and then screaming on. at one point. At one point, there's a blood curdling scream, <laughs> and then um, Kurt just remarks, "Something's wrong." <laughs> You're like, "Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely sounds That's... like it." <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the signal. <laughs> uh, so listen, George. I so my brain was hurting a bit towards the end, and then go on. When they find the voice log, there is a lot of information. I on rewound there. that bit three times. Did you Operation Return to the Light? Wait, so rats were thought. Uh, I, I. What did you get from it? Um. So I think I think separate to the scavengers who've returned to the earth's surface and are just sort of like nomads there's like yeah. another group have come through from from underground to try and yeah. sort of find a way of existing in this sort of post apocalyptic world and they've and they've managed to sort of grow plants and all that but at the same time they discovered what our sort of healer man has also um has also discovered yeah. that 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 the rats are now you know sort of a plague and and basically, they all die, don't they? But manage to record everything. Uh, but yeah. they do say that there's a second sort of group following. Is that right? Mm. I have no idea. I, I found it so confusing um, because I was all, I was mostly focused on the performance of that voice voice note because you can hear even fluffs of the lines <laughs> and going back. And his voice is getting more and more like this, and it's getting more. Oh stuff. yes, it's like it's he's hilarious. decided to be being killed during it or or it's his last yeah. sort of recording isn't it yeah yeah that's final very final captain's log it's one of them and i must warn you to remain where you are in the control room it is the only place where you will be safe the surface area is overrun by rats they kill any who are not of the same race as themselves remember human beings are their food and they will eat you if they are, if you are caught your only hope is if the Oma and, and team can reach you before the rats. Remember to... Uh, uh, they're here. They're pouring in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so apparently the rats have taken over the earth, even though these guys have never encountered them until this building. And, it, yeah, it all seems very histrionic. Um, and then, come on, it all of the shitty bits in the middle where it does feel a little bit trudgy is all forgiven with this final act with this group of hazmat suits that arrive. Right, so this is the following group that were referred to as Delta yes. 7 or something like that? Yeah, or something like something that. Something like that. And yeah, so they arrive seemingly to save the day, right? And they, they Cuz they're gas. gassing the rats. They gas all the rats and I think someone even remarks, "It's gas." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, that'll be... <laughs> It's not it's not just yes, a smoke do. machine." <laughs> 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 just to confirm to us um and then what we discover because i think there's only two of our lead cast yeah, left now kurt dies under a door the door that gets pushed over by rats and a de- dead body i think oh, i don't, right. I don't quite know how it happens but it point. crushes him yeah but uh, uh, yeah so it's video and chocolate and, and they sort of uh, say thanks great be saved and then the hazmat suitor removes his his mask and he's actually a a rat man so a uh, it's just amazing it's so but good. i actually think it's that one moment is really well structured and orchestrated because we see them coming around from the gas and it's sort of pov from them and he's you see these out of focus hazmat guys and they're sort of coming around and it's getting clearer and clearer as the main one is walking towards the camera. And then we eventually come to focus and we see it's this hazmat guy and he's only answering with nods. And she, But she lays it on a little bit thick. I think it would have been more You are our friend. Yeah, he says. Yes, right. You are the same race as us, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, are you kind of signposting this is, this it? Is, this, is, this is the payoff for sort of describing... Um, under the underground dwellers as sophisticated and anybody on the surface as scavengers, primitive scavengers. I That's think this it. is it. They basically wanted to flip the script, didn't they, at the end and sort of yes, say, ah, yes. you were wrong all, al- all along. It was sort of a mutated rat men, rat men underneath. Yeah, and the costume's kind of great. And, the, you know, the makeup, it's it's a sort so of, good. it's a rat as a as a mask, but but it's got, it's kind of, it's the not human just, eyes, though. Yeah, human eyes. Yeah, it's it's good. I, I love it. I think it's a, just a perfect stinger. And it very much feels like that's why the film was made. They went, how about post-apocalyptic, just three ideas, post-apocalyptic world, the 
everyone moved to the sewers, so the rats moved to Earth. And then at the end, we realised that evolution has combined rats and people. And then they're like, yeah, great. Let's just film. Let's film it. But film it tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah. We're not ready. (laughs) No, no, it doesn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) Very much that. Yeah. It was just like an idea of a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah, and it's and a good idea. They actually, just pressed record. But, yeah. Yeah. And then they got the cast of uh, Starlight Express to, <laughs> to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that for me. It's the fashion because there's quite a lot of these. There's a great one, Night of the Comet, Comet as well. Um, and always in these post apocalyptic 80s films, it's, they don't think, what will it be like? in the future they think what is the height of fashion right now and let's get that in it yeah hey who's to know that in 200 years people well, might be back in it might be well that's the thing uh, you know it's secular isn't it fashion yeah i mean even back to the future too doesn't really get it right does it you know it does like huge everything has got bigger like tvs have got bigger and all that kind yeah. of thing Oh boy! Very good. Rats it's night very good. of terror. I am. Um, I, I. I don't know when was appropriate to read it, but I did, because I, I was trying to get a grapple of the uh, of the the timeline, and I went on IMDb, and obviously yeah. you get um, user reviews on that, and there was one mm-hmm. very funny reviewer, who which I'd love yeah. to just read a little bit of. Please. So, the only sympathetic characters for me were the rats, who far from being menacing, were in fact huddled miserably together busily trying to clean from themselves the black goop with which they'd been coated in a clumsy attempt to make them look menacing. As for the human characters, I simply could not wait for them all to be dead. If there, if these were the survivors who were supposed to repopulate the planet, let the rats have the whole damn world. Not only do the rats have to suffer being gooped up, they have the further indignity of being repeatedly tossed at bad actors. And Italian animal rights laws evidently being looser, many rats are obviously injured or killed for the sake of action effects, including several which are clearly burned alive. Would that they could have given their lives for a more worthy film. I hope this movie isn't intercepted by some alien civilization because it would serve to convince them of the need to exterminate the human race for the good of the universe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's really good isn't it that's wonderful it's so well put <laughs> uh, it's an interesting one isn't it about rats though because there's all uh, this there's so much connected to the thought of rats as soon as you think of rats you think of disease you think of the plague uh, and in london apparently is it you're never more than two yeah, meters away meter from away a rat yeah. i don't know well, i mean i'm on the fourth floor of a you know a <laughs> a really nice uh complex so I, I don't know where the rat is at the moment that's a meter away um but i i do i get it i like the idea um it's just so italian because that's what they do they just press record on an idea and get everyone to just mill about yeah maybe it a, was abandoned building maybe it was the uh, the pilot for i'm a celebrity maybe somebody somewhere watched that <laughs> and thought let's put humans amongst rats ideally some bad actors <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's just, I, I loved it. I loved it. I, the thing is, I have seen it before. I saw it many, many, actually, I've actually got it on VHS. I've still got my VHS big box. Um, and all I remember from it is that final shot. And then that's all you need to remember. Because yeah. that's that's the clincher, isn't it? That's the, you know, if someone reminds you in five years and you've forgotten everything, you'll go, rat's night. Oh, that's the one, that's the one where the guy takes off his mask at the end. And so, for some reason in your head, it sort of clicks as an awesome movie. <laughs> Yeah, because well, of that it, yeah. moment. I mean, it was definitely enjoyable. Um, yeah, if a little. Repetitive. I just realised I um I always uh I always um make you talk about like underground dwellers. I didn't even realise that with Chud. Oh yeah, and that's my this. that's my niche. You're just sewer. You're you're just the sewer guy. <laughs> that's three. Yeah, that's three films set in sewers. Well, actually, it's not yeah. set in the sewer. They just come from there. Well, no, but it's yeah. Um, listen, um also because I'm such a horror sort of novice. I'm always mm. absolutely terrified when I hit play at the start of these. I know. Um, which is great, because you once did that to me. I remember we were in Brighton and you went on a really terrible ghost train and told me afterwards that it was the most terrifying experience of your life. And I went on to it <laughs> sort of sweating. Uh, and much like these, I, I sort of, within five minutes, went, oh, okay, they don't have to I'm be okay. terrifying. <laughs> no, no, they don't. I love that. I love the thought of you getting ready to play this and go, like trying to prepare yourself. Yeah, I was slightly putting scared. it off, going, I'm not in the mood to be sort of like hiding behind my cushion. 
Um, listen, thank you once again so much. Um, I always have a lot of fun doing this with you. Uh, any any other thoughts about uh, Rats Night of Terror? Um, n- no, but I mean, it will definitely stay with me. That's why. That's why I'm here. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you. I think um, you'd get a lot of fun out of Jaws Five slash cruel jaws so i reckon we'll come back next time and do that and that's in the 90s as well that's like 94 oh, okay. 95 that sounds great so um so it's the you know they'd learnt by then that you need a little bit more of a narrative and some you know actual char- characters with with sort of uh, personality and so there's a lot more to enjoy about that one it's not just the uh, the luster shark Oh, great. Okay. So I reckon next time, next time you're back, that's what we're going to do. Um, well, yeah. thank you once again. Tell everyone where they can find you, not your home address. <laughs> yes, so I live. <laughs> um, yes, I'm on social media. I'm not a TikTok superstar like yourself, but I am on Stop X it. at George Rainsford or Instagram at G Rainsford. Grainsford. Yes, Grainsford. I think I told you, you before that I did I did think somebody had stolen my name and then I realised it was actually me in a previous life who set up Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened uh, amazing well thank you buddy and um well, i'll see you before christmas yeah definitely all right nine <laughs>